And Mark Nelson, our favorite metalsmith, is back here. And we've turned the bench around. And Mark, you are showing us this gorgeous neck wire. You could mm -hmm. hang any pendant here. You really could. Yeah, and it's going to showcase that pendant and make it really special. And it gives us a chance to show this awesome tool bench that you've <laughs> built here. Yeah, I've got it here uh, an anvil, a regular anvil, and um, a stand that it goes on, and then a vise to hold this other kind of anvil bust. Um, normally, I wouldn't do this at home. I wouldn't stick my anvil, uh, my vise on the same stump, but you know, because of what we're doing here, uh, I changed it up a little bit to get both on the one stand. Okay. So. Um, Let's get started. You ready to get started? Ready. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a thick gauge of wire, um, right around 10 to 12 gauge. And is it sterling? Going to be sterling silver, but you can do this in any kind of wire, um, brass, copper, um, silver. Okay. So what we need to do, first of all, is we're going to make that little bend where the, the uh, pendant goes. So we're going to bend it right in half with our fingers. And so even at that thick gauge, it's pretty malleable. It really is. It's dead soft, which means it's going to have some um, some movement to it, and um, you can you can really manipulate it with your fingers. Now the key thing is that um, you want to pinch it just enough to give you that little dip. If you pinch it pinch it all the way closed, you may not be able to get something in down in there. So don't pinch it too much. You do that as much as you can with your hand, and then you can take a mallet or um, and kind of make it a little tighter. Now, for a neck ring, um, 18 to 22 inches in length is pretty good. And you're allowing for the fact that most neck rings don't use a clasp. It would just be mm -hmm. something that sits right around the neck. It sits right around the neck and it kind of just kind of clamps onto the neck. So I'm going to um, bend it about that much right here. And then I'm going to use a hammer uh, to do some forging. Now here's the thing with forging. People think of the old guy with the big hammer, John Henry. Right. And then boom, you know, and doing that. Or blacksmith with big burly arms. Right. No, none of that. We're making jewelry. This so is gentle. This is gentle forging. Um, and you're going to use the weight of the hammer um, to do all the work. Your job is to aim, OK? So what you're going to do is you're going to have a nice kind of lightish grip. So you don't have to put a lot of muscle behind it. Not at all. You're not going to you know, do this or anything at all. Nice light grip. You let the hammer fall. And if you notice, it bounces, okay? Mm -hmm. So all the energy is coming back up. So let the hammer do its job, and you just kind of direct it. I'll apply a little bit of force, and I'm going to start right in the middle. I'm going to flatten it just a little bit with the flat side, and then I'm going to switch to the dome side. Reason being is that every time you hit the metal, it's going to spread out at a 90 degree force, okay? So when you come down, the metal goes out this way, okay? Okay. Um, if I wanted to direct that, I could do a cross peen hammer like this, and when I hit, the energy goes this way. So then what happens? Well, that's, if, say, if I wanted to thin um, a part of the section here, right. or direct the thickness, direct it more, I would do it, use a cross peen. So we've done paddle pins before. Mm -hmm. Is that the same kind of technique that you're doing? You're sort of pushing your Pretty hammer much. across as you hammer it out? Yeah. Using the shape of the hammer to direct the, the way the, uh, the metal moves. And I just learned yesterday that it's really important to keep your thumb down, you don't, or your finger. You don't want to, the way that you hold the hammer, if you're using it repeatedly, can hurt your wrist if you're not holding it properly. Right, right. Uh, for lighter hammers, I would say finger's pretty good, but for heavier ones, just a, a good light grip. Okay. Because you're, you're just kind of cradling it right here in the crook of your hand. So you're just going to start directing it. See how it kind of kind of grow in there? Yes. And could you use a it. texturing hammer for this too? You could. You definitely could, and it'd be, it'd be a really deep texture. I would probably do a lot of the forging with um, a regular smooth-faced hammer, and then texture at the very end. Reason being is that um, if I used a texturing hammer at the very beginning, it would really chew it up. Right, and it you could know. cause breakage, maybe. Right. And you, with a nice uh, smooth hammer, polished hammer, you can see the beautiful hammer marks. Yeah, it's really pretty. And um, what you're going to do is just keep doing that portion until you get the shape that you want. And we're going to start our little crook right there. The next step is to make um, the bend where it goes up. Yeah, so let's take a look at this necklace again. So what you just made is this pinch part. The pinch part. For the hanger, and then we're going to bend it. Looks like it's a right angle? Yeah, pretty much a right angle. 
And what I've done is I measured up, according to my design, this can be anywhere from one to two inches. Uh, this is about an oh, inch and a quarter. And I marked it off with some mar a marker so I know where to hit. And also, this is where I need to bend. So you can use your fingers and just do a 90 and a 90. Do you want to kind of make it even? And this one takes a little more precision. And the key thing about um, any kind of design is a variety of line. Okay, and that's a, that's a good design element. So you want to go from thick to thin, thick to thin, and not just do everything the same thickness. So what you're saying is you're not pounding the whole entire wire flat. No. You really are creating a texture there. Right. Creating a texture, widening it just a little bit, and you certainly don't want to um, pound it too thin. So when does it start to take on the rounded shape? Uh, it's around the neck? Yes. Right about now. Oh. <laughs> And you just no. do it in sort of a wide arc? A wide arc to start with. And then once you get kind of the shape you want, you can turn to the bust right here and start bending by hand and forming it and manipulating it. Or you can use a mallet to kind of bend it. Now, do you need to work hard in the whole thing even though you're not necessarily flattening the uh, entire de thing? It depends on how far you get. Now, this project is designed so that you don't have to anneal. Oh, okay. okay. So you should end up right at the very best hardness for a neck wire. Um, but if you end up being pretty soft, you can actually come in here and just lightly tap it on the neck ring and work hard in it. And how do you finish the ends? Finish the ends? You want to finish with just a file or a rubber polishing wheel and um, then fine fit it to your, your customer. Okay. Well, thanks, Mark. This is a great way to hang any type of bead or pendant. Great. Thank you. And when we come back, we're going to chat with June Beach.